Our next partner session is by JP Morgan, commercializing blockchain by JP Morgan Onyx. For this, our speaker is Christine Moy, Global Head of Link Onyx by JP Morgan. Hi, I'm Christine Moy, Global Head of the Link Network, an offering from the newly created business division Onyx by JP Morgan. I'm honored to be here presenting at the Singapore FinTech Festival. Singapore has a very special place in my heart. I had the good fortune of being able to visit in person for the festival last year, right before the COVID-19 crisis hit. I hope everyone is doing well in these unprecedented times. Today, I wanna to share with you some of the key business applications that we are building with blockchain so that you can have a better understanding of why we think this technology has the potential to be transformational and why we are investing significant resources in making it real. JP Morgan has been working in blockchain technology for over five years. We were one of the first entrants to the enterprise blockchain space. And like many other financial institutions, we were enthralled by this technology's potential to transform the traditional financial system. Like others, we were carried away and along with the Gartner's hype cycle, first experiencing the peak of inflated in expectations um, that was when it seemed like every day was marked by a new press release about some cool new blockchain project somewhere in the world. And then more recently, working through the trough of disillusionment, which has just been characterized by a whole lot of work. Not a lot of glory, but in fact, even in the public domain, an emergence of skepticism, even dismissal about this technology's potential and overhype. For those of us who were here to start this blockchain revolution and build the future of money, it was like a bucket of cold water on our heads when we found ourselves up early in the morning and late at night, just circling an endless analysis to filter out just the right use case that had commercial potential, market feasibility, especially when we were in countless rounds of meetings describing again and again what we were trying to do in order to get the relevant approvals and in daily tech coordination and scrum meetings, driving the technology forward, industrializing it, building all the very important critical pieces, but just not so sexy trappings of identity and access management, entitlements, resiliency, and reporting. I don't think any of us who joined the blockchain revolution ever expected that the success or failure of our attempts to build the new future of money was going to hinge on an endless number of PowerPoints and project trackers and JIRAs. But we persisted and endured. And at this juncture, are now just starting to see the fruits of our labor as we are driving more solutions to production and getting more track record under our belt. As quiet and mundane as the past couple of years has seemed, Day by day, and with each milestone achieved, we have begun to see the future of money that we had long hoped for. The complete picture is not clear, but key pieces of that puzzle have been coming into focus, and we are getting excited about the possibilities. Not that same naive excitement as a few years ago when it seemed like blockchain could solve any problem, make your coffee included. No, we hope people don't believe that anymore. But we have a new type of excitement with a more mature point of view that the technology that we're working with can enable new and unique capabilities that do not exist in the traditional financial system today. And we can confidently say now that we have the expertise to build solutions that address real world pain points for financial institutions and corporates at a global scale. As I mentioned, the big picture of the future of money is not clear at all but we do have a few clues on what it might look like. Number one, the future of money will be designed first with shared infrastructure and collaboration in mind, but data privacy and ownership will be prioritized in new models of infrastructure and utility. We learned this through building one of the largest blockchain networks of banks in the world, the Link Network, formerly known as the Interbank Information Network. Since going live almost three years ago, we have almost 400 banks signed up we first started the link network with the resolve application, um, basically to resolve sanctions ex exceptions. So how this works is when a cross-border payment is made, it hops through multiple banks in the correspondent bank chain. A bank in the middle may hold up the payment instruction and say, 
the receiver of this payment is on my sanction screening exception list. Is this actually the same person? Can we verify a birth date or address? Afterwards, a sequence of telephone calls and emails goes back up the chain of correspondent banks to find this information. And we measure this. It can take over a couple days or even a couple weeks to resolve this. So what we did was build a network to connect these correspondent banks and a payment instruction together in a peer-to-peer -peer way so that the bank looking for the information can connect directly with the bank who has the augmenting information, resolving a sanction exception in just a few minutes. But rather than create a honeypot of data, we set up the information transmission as a private bilateral transaction between the bank that is sending the information and the bank that's asking for the information. Now imagine this, onboard onto the link network, access a global network of over 400 cross-border payments banks without sharing or losing control of your data assets. We are listening to our link participants and even to this date, we are collecting new requirements. Now link participant, de link participant demands are driving us to focus on ensuring blockchain nodes are being run in the local regional data centers in Singapore and in Europe, giving our link partners complete confidence in data privacy and data sovereignty. Second clue to the future of money. Contrary to existing business models where a key central actor like a bank, tech company or fintech company captures the most commercial benefit from the market, in the future of money that we're seeing, applications will be designed with incentive alignment in mind and a deliberate and scalable implementation of revenue sharing. We are just now starting to put this in action through a new link application that has been inspired by the overwhelming feedback from our clients, Confirm, uh, that has just gone live, which is focused on enabling banks and corporates to pre-validate account ownership, status, activity, and effects helping to reduce fraud that occurs from sending payments to unverified bank accounts and reducing extra operational processes required when a payments instruction is not formatted correctly. Now in this model, you have a data requester, um, basically the, the entity, the bank or the corporate that's about to make the payment saying, I'm gonna pay to this account number, is this Christine Moy's account? And on the other side, you have a selection of banks that can be a data responder. And typically it'll be the bank that actually owns the account that can respond and say, yes, I see this bank account, it's actually my account. And yes, I can confirm it's Christine Moy's account. You can have confidence making this payment. Now in this model that we've developed, the data requester who's making the inquiry will actually pay a fee into the system. But the data responder, the bank that actually says like, this is, a, this is the account that I recognize and I can confirm the account owner, gets a direct cut of that fee paid by the data requester. Now, those of you that are familiar with markets infrastructure, this is not typical in a shared infrastructure scheme, but we thought it was important to empower our link participants to think of themselves as partners with direct access to the upside commercial success of a shared link application. In addition to applications that JP Morgan is developing, we are working with the 400 banks to enable them to write their own applications to deploy onto the network, amplifying their reach with our global network and enabling them to create their own value and revenue at lower cost than building and industrializing their own blockchain network, full, full, full stack zero to, to live. The third thing that we're seeing about the future of money is that it will definitely be programmable and 24 seven, 365, and will not have overnight batches. Following the link network, our major program of work is focused on building out JP Morgan coin and clearing networks. We have spent the past year working on blockchain-based core banking systems to make global payments more seamless, efficient, and programmable. While building the technology was certainly difficult, the hardest part was working through the various internal and external approvals required for legal and regulatory treatment of the blockchain-based deposit system. We are proud to announce that we are now live and able to facilitate cross-border transfers for corporate clients 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, without being limited by traditional local cutoff times and pre-funding requirements. Additionally, we are continuing the US dollar multi-currency payments clearing system work 
that we announced with the Monetary Authority of Singapore as part of the Project Ubin Phase 5 last year. Building a multi-bank shared ledger to enable cross-border and multi-currency payment settlements that are real-time and atomic for the Asian region. The fourth observation that we have about the future of money is that shared ledgers for tokenized payments and securities will be seamlessly intertwined. Another program we have been developing is an evolution of the tokenized bond work we started a few years ago. Back in 2018, we built an application to issue, syndicate, and settle blockchain-based bonds, automating the full life cycle of the financial instrument and automating interest payments and maturity. So we actually tested a $150 million floating rate bond issuance with a North American issuer and a number of global asset managers. Since then, and in partnership with our markets business, we have continued our efforts in maturing foundational technology components to enable delivery versus payment settlements, orchestrate and automate interactions between a tokenized securities and a tokenized cash ledger, and leveraging those capabilities to create new financial instruments uniquely enabled by blockchain. With these significant programs in flight, we believe we are building the key foundational components of a next generation financial system. Peer-to-peer -peer transfer of information with the link network, global and real-time value transfer with JP Morgan coin and clearing networks, and a programmable ecosystem that joins up typically independent securities collateral and cash systems in seamless orchestration of exchange. The potential of global commerce has long been throttled by antiquated technology processes and thinking, not just antiquated technology, but processes and also thinking. Onyx by JP Morgan exists to collaborate with those boldly reimagining how businesses are built, grow and interact in a connected world. Together, we seek to build the world's most advanced ecosystem with ubiquitous access to infrastructure, collaboration networks, services and expertise. We hope that we can go on this exciting journey with you and break new ground together. Thank you.